In this lesson, we'll finish off the flesh tones by adding color to our character's hands. All right, fantastic. So um, kind of the same routine. We've uh, already done the legs and the face and the, ne the neck and chest areas. So uh, the last area of visible skin on our character here is her hands. So um, basically exact same technique I've used before. I've come in and I've kind of sketched out the values um, on the, our shadows and highlight layer. So uh, thinking about that, I'm going to come in here. Again, make sure I have my skin layer selected. And let's jump over here to our warm colors. And I believe we used this one here. So we'll come in and just kind of do a little comparison. Actually, I'm going to use that one here. So uh, we'll come in and drop in kind of that lighter value there. And again, we could run that down her hands as well if we really wanted to. Uh, we're always going to come back in and just kind of cover that up anyways. So. And we can come in and maybe shrink our brush down just a little bit here. Now, hands tend to be a little bit more red, if you will. There's a little bit more blood that's closer to the surface. Uh, so the hands tend to have a little bit more of a red tone to them. So uh, we're probably going to be working quite a bit on this next palette over here and maybe even some over here. But uh, for right now, let's come over here and grab another value. Maybe not quite there yet. That looks like a nice contrast, a uh, nice logical step. And we'll come in and just kind of blend some of the splotchiness out. Uh, it's kind of important, the, 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 basically, the strokes that you apply the marker with. So uh, you saw how I went in and blended uh, that splotchy area. Um, once you've gotten used to using the Cop the Copic markers, you'll uh, get a little more competent in the strokes you lay down. I think that that's um, really kind of key because, you know, we're really over blending at this point. We should be able to lay these down a lot quicker uh, with a lot more confidence. But uh, obviously, you can see here how, you know, with a little bit of time spent, uh, the right amount of blending, you can really produce some nice results here. So uh, coming in here now, let's come in, maybe see what that color looks like. You'll notice I switched over to our colorless, actually rather our Copic Super Brush. Um, basically uh, using that as a little bit smaller detail brush here at this point. So uh, let me switch back over to this one for the moment. And I want to come in and kind of pull in a little bit. Maybe not quite that dark. I want to come over the fingers a little bit. There we go. And we can start to just kind of layer this value in. That's a pretty big step. So kind of come in and just blend that into place. And let me come up, grab my eraser come in and erase away just a little bit along the edges and see here with the smaller the details the more likely I am to get outside the lines so every now and then I will come in and just sort of clean the edges you'll notice though throughout this course we've been working exclusively out of the Copic library and um, you may wonder well, why aren't you coming over and picking your own colors well the reason for that is that by working exclusively out of the Copic library of colors if you wanted to come in and create the same type of image uh, on a sheet of marker paper with their actual physical markers you could actually go and buy these colors for example this salmon red it's r05 you could buy that marker and have the ability to work with that marker on paper and it should look exactly the same so i'm going to come over kind of blend in a little bit there obviously the hands are a very small detail but uh it's one of those things where in this case we'll, we would have to horribly horribly um color the hands to basically have them stand out so we don't want to do that we want to give them just enough attention hopefully we'll be able to knock this out in a single lesson I don't see why we shouldn't be able to all right 
you'll see I'm starting to work towards my purples and worked a little bit quickly towards those got kind of dark kind of fast and need to clean your blender just again just off to the side uh, if you're using traditional markers it would be on a separate piece of paper and you can quickly and easily just kind of clean the tip of it over and blend that a little bit there And let's jump over here. Maybe start to pull in some of these darker values. A little more saturation over here. And we'll kind of bounce back and forth. We don't want to jump exclusively over to those purples. That's a, that's a pretty prominent change in, in color. Notice that I'm leaving the tip of her thumb uh, colored in that same highlight color. I feel like that maybe there's a little bit of the highlight reflecting off the kind of where her thumbprint would be. And come down here. All right, great. So I'm going to jump over and work with one of these detail brushes again, kind of getting these uh, shadows in between her fingers. And just kind of bounce around, jump over here now on the side, maybe run a blender along that. Jump over and grab my eraser. little bit of quick cleanup and let's zoom out on this and see how it's looking all right that hands looking pretty good I think it could use maybe a little bit more attention but again nothing different than we've done so far and she's got one other hand over here so I want to get a little bit of quick color on that as well now obviously this hand is kind of behind her so the light source isn't going to directly hit it so um, again once you have started to become a little more confident with these markers you'll be able to come in and work a little bit quicker with them uh, notice I jumped for a much darker color in this case and we'll come over here I am going to come in and hit that with a warmer color kind of on the top little bit of erasing away here and we'll jump over to our super brush again come in and try and get that shadow underneath her her the sleeve of her of her blouse there And jumping in, grabbing some of these darker values. Maybe jump over to our bigger nib. Spot check our shadows. And grab the eraser one more time. All right, great. So um, you can see how quickly 
these colors begin to lay down. Once you've kind of gotten accustomed to uh, dropping these markers into place and choosing the colors, the process becomes quicker and quicker and quicker. So um, in this lesson, we have spent a little bit of time adding some color to the hands of our character, uh, but you know, there's a lot left. Really, we've only handled her flesh tones. So um, at this point, let's go ahead and kind of shift back to the most important feature, her head. And let's go ahead and in the next lesson, we'll begin working on her hair.